How's it going everybody? Derek from Make Media Studios and this week I kind of want to just have a dialogue with you about how I went through my journey of becoming like a freelancer and a small business owner and maybe my story and what I did will help you figure out what you need to do. Because I don't think that it's a cookie cutter process. Becoming a freelancer kind of, you either like kind of fall into it or the kind of the stars align to um, make things work correctly. So like for me, let's just start from the beginning. I, I did photography in the Navy and I was an electronics technician in the Navy. Um, I actually thought I was gonna be an electrical engineer. I got accepted to San Jose State. I got out of the Navy and I went into actually being a field service engineer for a an analytical x-ray company. So I worked on x-ray systems for about a year and a half. And it was an okay job, but I started filming with my friends on the side and I've always played with cameras. So I kind of realized I wanna continue this path more. And I, so I went back to school for videography. So I think my situation might be a little different than some of you out there, but since I was in the Navy, the Navy paid for me to go to school. So that was kind of my jump off point. I was able to get paid to go to school. So I started doing freelance videography and they all, they kind of meshed because those first gigs you get as a freelancer are really going to be probably really low or you're going to work for free to build a portfolio to get more jobs and more gigs. And at first it's not gonna pay your bills maybe as much. I mean, I was 28, 29 when I started. So uh, maybe more like 30 actually. <laughs> but um, at that point I had a lot of bills on my car payment, my rent, and I was paying for a lot of things. I think everyone's situation's a little bit different. Let's talk about like kind of the first things that align to make freelance my full-time job. One of my things that I would suggest for you to, to find some of your first gigs is maybe someone that works at a company already that needs video marketing or they work in the marketing department of a company or they know someone in a company that is in the marketing department. So I had a friend that worked um, at a local energy company in the Bay Area and he introduced me to their marketing manager. Um, I sat down and had an interview with them. This is while I was in college. So I still had about two years left of college and I'd done a little bit of work. I had a camera and a gimbal. I don't think I owned like any lighting. I didn't even have audio equipment yet, but I went in there and told them that I can do, I'd maybe done a couple weddings. So that's about all I had under my plate. And I went in there and they said they want someone to go to local events and take photos and video of um, you know festivals and Earth Day events and stuff like that. And that was my foot in. And I started with them and they gave me a contract for a year and it's grown. They're my still my main customer. That's my main source of income as a freelancer. But then it kind of evolved even more. And what I suggest is make sure that you network with people at your school, maybe, or other people, like my friend that got me that job. But another one was um, one of my film teachers um, hooked me up with a gig that his production company couldn't handle or didn't have the ability to do. So when you meet these people that are other freelancers or other video producers, if they like you or they see that you have potential and you're like a good worker, they're gonna refer you to someone else in their name. You know, so I actually got a gig with um, the New York Post. It was for a runner that did the Big Sur Marathon. And it was a, a, like a piece on him and they just needed the section at the marathon. They'd have already filmed everything else. They needed me to follow him on the marathon route and take video footage and sound clips of him running. So I packed up my gimbal. At that point now I have a microphone that I put on my camera and they gave me an e-bike and I followed this guy on the Big Sur Marathon, which was a really cool experience. But because I found that gig, they paid me through a website called Story Hunter. And um, I'll put a link down below. I'm not sure how you can get added into it, but they invited me into Story Hunter. And on there, there's other companies like um, Business Insider and BBC and other news agencies that are looking for uh, videographers, okay? So I then went on that website and I did a hims and hers interview for Bloomberg up in New York. Uh, I mean, uh, I did a hims and hers interview for Bloomberg 
uh, with the CEO. I did, so one of the gigs I found on there is I did a, so after, so after the New York Post, I actually started lose, using that website to find more work. One of them was a interview with the CEO of Hims and Hers uh, for Bloomberg. Um, so I went up to New York to, oh my gosh. So one of the gigs was actually a interview of the CEO of Hims and Hers. So I went up to San Francisco and went to their um, Tim's and Hers and met the CEO and did an interview of them. And then I sent them B-roll footage interview and they edited the video in New York. So that was like my second gig through Story Hunter. And then just recently, um, I just did work with Business Insider making how-to videos for how to do how to French press coffee and um, you know the the number one in their opinion Baratza Encore a conical burr grinder. So it was two video shoots in one. I filmed a whole bunch of B-roll of making French press coffee and using this grinder and they got two videos out of it. And they just put those up on their YouTube last week. So that's one realm of how I started as a freelancer. Um, like I said, kind of the stars have to align. I think that you need to say yes to as many things as possible to find opportunities and meet people to network with. And then there's like the business side of the house. Okay. So let's talk about like some of the things I had to do as a business. Um, I did a fictitious business name or an FBN with my local county, which was Santa Clara County at the time, um, for Derek May photography. And then I moved in and did Make Media Studios eventually once I started you know, this YouTube channel and I started doing business underneath this name. With an FBN, you can open a bank account, okay? So now you have a proper way to take money from someone as a business because you don't wanna work for someone and be like, yes, um, write, write me a check to Derek May, you know, and just put my name on it and I'll cash it. You can do that. But, you know, having them write it to Make Media Studios or Derek May Photography is more of a legit business at that point. So having that business banking account um, with that name on it, you can accept checks under that name. That's the first start there. Then you're gonna have to be able to do invoices, okay? So you need to be able to invoice your customer for the work that you did um, underneath that name, that FBN that you started at the county. Um, I use QuickBooks, okay? It's pretty simple. It keeps track of my money in my, in my bank account. I can link my US bank to my QuickBooks and everything kind of manages itself. I make invoices to my customers and that's how I, that's how I collect my money from my customers and do my billing. And then one of the other things that kind of aligned for me was um, one of my teachers at school, uh, this is a different school now, she helped me become a assistant for a videographer that does corporate gigs in the Bay Area. Being someone's assistant, you can pick their brain about how they how they became a freelancer, how they run their business, um, how they get clients. And um, this guy I work with, Scott, and I, I picked his brain every time we were in the car. I'd drive to his office, pack up his car, and I'd pick his brain as we drove to the client's place. I'd ask questions of how he did things, what's his history, where he's at. And he's been doing this for like 20, 20 years or something like that. Meeting people in the industry that have been doing it for a long time, you can ask a lot of questions and you can find out how their story and what they did can help motivate what you're gonna do in your business and how you're gonna get to that next point. That's kind of what you're doing with this video. By just watching and hearing what I've done, maybe some of the things I've done can help you figure out how to be a freelancer yourself. I mean, it's just a start. Maybe at first you might need to work part-time somewhere, but something that has flexible hours because your customers are going to book you and maybe rebook you and change dates and times. And you kind of need to be open availability. If someone goes, hey, can you shoot in two days? You have to be able to say yes, because if you start trying to move that around your other schedule, they're going to just go with someone else. And you also need to come off as this is your full-time job, even if it is only your part-time job at first. So you need a flexible job. I got lucky I was going to school in the military, paid for it, but maybe something that's like waitress or I have some friends that make a lot of um, YouTube videos, they work at a movie theater. Um, maybe those type of jobs, you know, there's some flexibility in there and you can talk with your employer and be like, look, I need to have some flexibility options when it comes to being able to call off work or move around my schedule for other customers because I'm running my own business on the side. 
hopefully you can find that. And I think that might be your most difficult thing at first to find that type of opportunity. But once you find that, then the stars will start to align. You start working more and it just exponentially grows over time. We're, we're talking two or three years. I think that at the three year point of starting full time or at least this part time version, you do that for three years. At the end of the three years, you're going to feel a little bit more comfortable like you can take care of rent and bills and your customers have grown and you're getting more clients and you have a portfolio that you can use to find more work. It's taken me about three years. That's that's where I'm at. You know, my my normal day, I wake up and I, I search online for different freelance positions and opportunities. I cold email companies to see if they need um, any video work. I get referrals from people that um, maybe can't handle it or they need they need someone else to take over a gig for them. I still do some weddings on the side. I'm doing one this year in a couple weeks. So I feel like it's just taking as many gigs and opportunities as possible. And then eventually, and I haven't got there yet, but eventually you can get to a point where you get to choose what gigs, you know, or what is is that you want to do exactly. And you can say no to things. But at first and where I'm at right now, I feel like I just need to say yes to anything. Um, I don't do too much free work. I try not to. Um, the only time I'm going to do free work is if it's something I haven't already done in my portfolio that I want to explore, like maybe real estate. I haven't done real estate videography, but I would really like to get into real estate videography. So I would love to do like a million dollar house for free, film it, drone, B-roll, maybe some interviews with the, um, with the realtor and stuff like that. Put that all into a video and give that to them for free, but only do it once. Once they like that, and if they want more, then they can pay. Or you can use that in your portfolio now to find other clients in that same type of videography world. That's the dialogue I wanted to have with you today. Just a story of kind of how I built my business, where I'm at in my business, and maybe how any of these tips can help you move your business forward. I'm still learning. If there's anything you want to teach me, leave it down in a comment below. If you have any other questions, again, leave that in a comment down below. And if this is the first time to the channel, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, leave a comment, share this with a friend, help us expand Make Media Studios. All right, and that's the end of this video. I'm Derek May, this is Make Media Studios, and we are out. Wait, stop, look. There's more things that you can still do. If you minimize whatever video you're currently watching of mine and you scroll down a little bit, there's gonna be this red subscribe button. You know what you do? You click it. Just check this out, ready, watch. It's it, crazy. It goes from red to gray. Right? Blew my mind. I want you to check to see if yours goes from red to gray. Tell me in the comments below if it did or not. Other than that, you have a great day sitting at home or whatever you're doing at work or in the car. If you're driving, put down the phone and look at the road. But other than that, thanks. Have a good day.